Good evening everybody. This is Prashant from the webcast team of IIT Bilal. We have been making webcast for spreading the information regarding COVID-19. We are reaching out the people from major field whose decision can impact a thousand number of people. We are trying to understand this current pandemic situation from their perspective. So how are you managing an in educational institute during these times? Uh, that's a very good question because these times are difficult times. Uh, they have forced everybody to be in the social distancing norms and operating from homes. Fortunately, around this time, another technology has taken many people new high, and this allows people to actually connect through. Uh, internet through social media and can do distance based education, distance based meetings, and such kind of things. Every day, I actually end up doing something close to about five to six hours of meeting only on the video conferencing and over social media. Um, we are in control of the entire process, our salaries, our uh, uh, scholarships, fellowships, classes, and everything else that is very, very important for administrative functions are actually happening over online communication. All our staff yes. is available online and we are actually doing largely most of the management of educational institute through online mechanisms, except once in a while uh, where we may need to do a physical meeting um, only in case of emergencies and in those cases we need to maintain a very strong norm of social distancing otherwise uh, for most purposes we are able to do video based audio based uh, and social media based uh, video conferencing and able to manage the educational institutes all right sir so it is rather interesting like i never really thought that technology can to this extent like everybody is staying at home and we are still able to take care of most of the things that we want to for example in the education sector we are able to do it so as such from a technology perspective how do you think we can fight against covid 19. i think the biggest difference against covid 19 is to maintain a social separation and a social separation has its own fallouts the biggest fallout for social separation is you know the depression people actually need to talk to each other and if they don't talk to each other there is a certain amount of boredom and certain amount of depression sets in the technology yes. actually helps in beating all of these issues because while remaining physically disconnected, the technology actually permits people to remain connected through social mm -hmm. media, through telephones, through variety of other things. People are more strongly connected than any time earlier that I had seen in my life. In addition mm -hmm. to this, there are various other features, various other things which are actually coming in the way of handling COVID-19, there again the technology comes in handy. For example, testing for COVID-19, providing protection for frontline health workers, the sanitation workers, police force, and such kind of people who are actually facing uh, or are at the uh, biggest risk of meeting people. And for them, the technology is actually coming very handy in helping to fight against COVID-19. First of all, the information can be conveyed to people very rapidly. And second thing yes. is that we are able to handle in certain times like this, rumors actually start moving around and we are able to handle rumors pretty well. And that's a big achievement. We are able to convey our uh, thinking process to people very well. And at the same time, things like testing and uh, uh, you know monitoring and such kind of things are actually able to progress 
by handling the COVID-19 cases. So in all, we have been able to fight against COVID-19 by keeping the information availability with us. And that's the biggest achievement that technology could provide for fight against COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So there have been many applications like the Setu app, the Kavach app, that have allowed social distancing and like letting people know if they are safe and i think in those terms also technology has played a very significant role now given this uh, a lot of times we have questions in our mind as to the situation are bad at this moment of time but how will we recover will we bounce back just to normal things as they were before or there will be like fall further things may go bad for some times and then we'll come back or things will gradually get better I think this what is, is your opinion on it? This is a major setback that has happened to the progress that the country was face seeing and in general the progress that the world was seeing. There is going to be a huge impact of the current situation on economy, on employment, on the way things are going to happen. I'm sure the world is not going to be the same uh, in time to come. But I also have a very strong belief that at any point in time, such kind of calamities fall upon the humankind, people actually turn stronger and become even better in handling such situations. This has been the case in the past. People have seen it. We will actually be, I am very, very confident that we will be seeing the same turnaround and probably even better ways of doing things. It may not happen in the immediate future, but in time to come, we will not only recover, but we will be much stronger out of this situation and we will have ability to handle these kind of situations much better in time to come. Uh, so given this, uh, you might have had to take a lot of hard decisions during these times. And it is during these times that some of our fundamentals are challenged as to how things will happen, what decisions I should take. So what governing rules in life help you in making such decision when your decision is going to impact lives of a lot of people? In your case, it is the students, whether to start the classes again, whether to do the examination and the modes of examination. What are those governing rules? I think the um, biggest problem in making any rules is or following any rules is to make our people safe and yet the system to be functional. For example, when COVID-19 um, cases started coming in, we were in the mid-semester break for Holi. Now, there was a big decision to be taken whether we allow students to go out of the campus or we don't allow the student to be out of the campus. Whether we allow people who are outside the campus to come inside or whether we actually prohibit that. And all of these things have variety of different uh, parameters that one has to judge, the way, weighing of those parameters and trying to figure out what to do. And I think the guiding principle has always been how to make life better for people. For example, uh, at some point in time, it was thought that we should, as Chhattisgarh is actually a very safe state at this point in time. And therefore, social distancing Within the institute is a harder thing. However, if we ask the students to go out through public transport and all that, they will probably get more exposed to vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in unknowingly, they could transmit some of these things to their own family members, to their own people, and even aged parents or grandparents. So there was a big question mark on what should be done. Uh, similarly, when we come to the classes, there are always these weighing things that goes on. Is the internet available with the students or not? Will the online uh, classes be good or not? And many times, if we don't take such decisions, there will be impact. For example, our final students are going to graduate. They will actually have plans in their life to do. Some of them are going to go into higher studies. Some of them are going to go into jobs. Probably everything will get postponed a little bit here and there. But at the same time, 
whatever planning has been done, we should not disturb that plan as much as possible. And with that in mind, it was thought that our final students as much as possible should graduate well within time. We may postpone convocations, but we cannot postpone the graduation of our students. So therefore, keeping that in mind, we had no other option but to start online classes. Now, when we start online classes in the similar line, we have other kind of decisions to make. For example, should we take online exams? Should we not take online exams? And if we take online exams, in what format should the online exam be so that it is least disturbance to people and yet it is an enabling thing for those who would be graduating. And these have been some of those hard decisions where various options, pros and cons have to be weighed upon. Decisions have to be done by talking to people, figuring out whether these decisions will be good or bad. And we actually have been having a lot of meetings even for doing such kind of decisions, new academic calendars. Um, we have been in touch with other institutes, directors of other institutes, trying to figure out what are they doing. And therefore, given the circumstances, given our own local conditions, and looking at the pros and cons of every step that we take, decisions are taken. And many times these decisions are very, very hard decisions. May probably not be some decisions may not be the most likable one, but given the current circumstances, we probably don't have any other option. So, I understand, sir. So the, I think the biggest driving force for making all these decisions have been to keep our people safe, secure, and healthy. And yet, yes, the system's functional. All right, sir. So with that, uh, one question comes to mind when we push everything to online classes and we are still able to ensure that the curriculum goes forward. Do you think in future more classes can get converted to online mode? Could this replace the current system of education? Let's say for computer science, will it be possible? Um, I think um, I would see in future more and more online content to be there but i don't think online content even with this situation can completely replace the offline uh, offline education and the reason is very simple the kind of interactions that happen the kind of um, you know uh, the kind of question answers the kind of learning that happens in offline education it cannot be there cannot be a parallel to this in online. Probably a mix of online and offline will continue. Um, at this point in time, we have no solution. We have no other solution but to go only online. And despite that, many institutions, many organizations have actually taken a considered view on that. For example, IIT Bilai did only half of the courses online, but other half courses are postponed. Many other institutes continue to do all courses online. Some other institutes did not do any course online. And I think uh, in my earnest opinion, online classes cannot be the replacement for offline classes. In an education system like that of an IIT, where almost 70% or more education actually happens outside of the classrooms, there cannot be only online classes substituting for education. There is a huge amount of learning that happens because everybody stays together and keeps doing things which are different from the classroom, yet technical in nature. So I don't think in the near future or even for a longer time to come, we can actually move into completely online. There has to be a blend of online and offline system. Okay, uh, so moving on, uh, many a times like in the history during these pandemic situation, a lot of uh, inventions have occurred, years have been considered as years of wonders. Do you think like the corona pandemic situation will lead to the same thing? More inventions will come up, more adaptations will happen because as we know, necessity is the mother of invention. 
Absolutely, I think you said it. Necessity is the mother of invention, and this is the necessity. And since we actually will go around inventing new things, some of these things are going to be more comfortable for people, more convenient for people to use, and therefore many more things, many more technologies will come in. And my feeling is, um, in few years' time, we are going to see not many more, um, and I would actually call it. years of wonders instead of that i would call it years of cyber wonders now cyber space is actually going to become far much more relevant in our day to day life um, our internet connectivity to each and every person will become much 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 better and therefore far much better experiences of online system will be available uh, i am also sure these will probably give rise to certain kind of mechanism so that a variety of labs can be done even online um maybe newer ways of um, transmission or communication can be done holography is one such thing but there have been cases where people have been talking about can we transmit smells from one side to another side can we transmit the environment from one side to another side and i think in time to come we probably will see some of these years of wonders uh, or some of these wonderful things coming up uh, this is the time for people to get indulged into this and i'm sure that is what is going to happen that is what is there in future store for us and it is only going to be speeded up another thing that i actually mm. see very very strongly coming up is uh, healthcare remote healthcare is going to become a front seat because um, because of the social separations and all that many people are kind of being uh, left behind with reference to medical care and such kind of people would definitely like to have the remote or online medical care so medical care is actually going to be and yet another thing where lot of invention is going to come and lot of online stuff will happen so my feeling is in time to come we are going to see more as years of cyber wonders uh, uh-huh. and, and that's going to be the norm in time to come yes sir yeah indeed telemedicine and all these things are trying are catching up a lot and this has boosted these technologies further and it's going to create a huge impact as such the pandemic is going to create an impact so we are towards the last of this interview with you it has been like very enlightening for us to take the insights from you what is the general message do you want to tell out to the people who are listening to us i think the general message for me to say to the people in general is to actually use this as an opportunity use this as an opportunity to convey use this as an opportunity to uh, to showcase and use this as an opportunity to absorb all the uh, you know gifted elements that you have gifted talents that you have and these talents will actually help the human kind in general for example uh, this through webcast and all that we can actually our reach is very high and we should be able to convey the information in much better way this was definitely not a possibility for example 50 years back where only mode of communication would have been news but now we can actually use this media we can use similar way variety of other things somebody is good at certain other talent somebody is good at painting somebody is good at drawing somebody is good at something else and maybe these are the kind of uh, times where somebody can create notes somebody can create online tutorials somebody can create online education in fact for that matter somebody can do even online dramatics uh, you know and this kind of things are definitely a method for showcasing do not let the current situation be a handicap for exploring and showcasing your talent um, only then we can be all stronger indeed that is very true uh it was a great opportunity to listen to you and get into the insights that you have given we thank you so much for uh, coming to like 
coming online with us and enlightening us with all this information thank you sir thank you have a safe time